And welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I'm here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Hi, and welcome to my very special guest today, Maria Ray. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, Maria. Maria is a master energy healer and intuitive coach who helps women put an end to the pattern of constantly settling for less than they deserve and finally tap into the power to create their life on their terms. She combines energy healing, trauma regression, and intuitive coaching to create powerful and transformational healing experiences. Hi, Maria. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really excited for this conversation. Um, Maria's amazing. We've been internet friends for a while now, and we're <laughs> we're like internet BFFs. We talk to each yes. other almost every day, and yes. I've also we've been working together as well. So I can yes. give testament to that. She creates incredibly powerful transformational healing experiences. She's really a, really an amazing energy healer. And um, so I'm really excited to dive in and see what's going to come up in our conversation today. So I would love for you to kick off with a little bit of um, background to your story, Maria. Like, how did you, what was like a main turning point that led you to doing the work that you do today? It's, it's funny because I was kind of reflecting on this the other day. And I, and I mean, I think it happens in stages. I don't think there was one point, like it was like I was slowly being immersed to it for a very long time. I had been in coaching positions for for. for for years and predominantly working with women and doing training sessions and things of that nature. And then I found myself working in leadership development, like in in a corporate, in the corporate world and putting together retreats and workshops and and managing one-on-one coaching with a leadership team. And the whole culture and environment was really sort of infused into me. And I knew that was a direction I wanted to move in. However, it was really unclear as to the path and when it would happen and what route I would take and what message really spoke to me. Um, Then there was a phase. So this had been going on for a a few years where I was kind of immersed in, in, in all this goodness and juiciness and transformation and things that were like really getting me inspired and fired up. And then there was a period in my life where it literally I had reached what can only be described as sort of a precipice of where my people pleasing tendencies had taken me. And it began with the breakdown of my 15 year relationship where after 15 years of being lied to, manipulated and emotionally abused and neglected for so long, I, I, I just, I walked away and then relationships afterwards would exhibit the same sort of behaviors, but they would become emotionally abusive and stifle me and, and leave me feeling like I can't express myself and I can't ask for what I want in my relationships. And I'm always having to like bite my tongue. Um, And then that was also happening in my work with a very, in a very toxic environment that I ended up with, with a boss that was very abusive. So suddenly I found myself getting bombarded by all this emotional abuse and stifling energy that was literally making me feel like I could not stand up for myself. I had to keep settling. I had to keep um, literally shutting down my voice for for what I would and would not stand for and what I wanted until I finally just said enough. Like it was just like a massive breaking point where um, not only did it intensify my own healing journey, but it really was the catalyst that actually got me on the path to really empowering myself and preparing myself to do this work for others as well. And the two kind of came 
hand in hand, but the beginning of the journey was years before when I started a blog, just sort of sharing my journey and how I was feeling and struggling through my divorce and everything. So it was a very, it wasn't a what, what I guess what I want to say is it wasn't one moment. It was a season in my life that definitely had a catalytic event that shifted things really quickly and overnight. Amazing. I didn't even know a lot of that about you. And thank you so much. And we've talked this. so much. We have these conversations. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing that story because I'm sure tons and tons of women who are listening to this will resonate with that. And, you know, I know how much strength it takes to leave a relationship, right? A lot of people don't because they're afraid that they yeah. won't find anything better or, you know, this is as good as it gets and, and just kind of keep swallowing what doesn't feel right. Because yeah. it is, it is a big challenge and it is scary to to step out into the unknown and take a stand for yourself when you don't even know necessarily what that's going to pan out like. And so, yeah, there's nobody better, obviously, to help others than somebody who's walked that path themselves and been through the struggles and the challenges and overcome that fear. Um, so I would love, like, speaking a little bit about you know, how, how did you uncover your path as an energy healer? Tell me a little bit about how that played out. That actually kind of revealed itself to me, to be quite honest. Um, I was very intuitive as a child, but I kind of shut down my intuition after, um, having what was a a series of um, not I won't say frightening experiences with my intuition, but let's, there was, I was starting to, to, to tap into my intuition in such a powerful way that it was actually starting to scare me because well, I was brought up in the belief that, you know, anything psychic is bad and it, you know, it goes against religion. So when I started to have these experiences, I started to feel like I was bad and I started to feel like something was wrong with me and I wasn't, I wasn't a good person. And, you know, I I would go to hell and all these things started to come up for me when I was a child. So when the moments would happen, I I would literally pray that they would just go away and I, I wouldn't experience it anymore. And then finally they did. And then I guess at some point towards the end of my marriage right before the end of my marriage actually where I didn't know we were ending at this point I started to reconnect with my intuition to get, again very powerfully but this time I felt a little bit more at ease with it and the best thing that I can tell you is it was a it was a slow process of letting go of the fear and the doubt and trusting what was coming through and just allowing it to just be, and just taking little steps each and every day to to dive into my intuition, which inevitably led to um, me doing more intuitive work, then doing more meditation work, and then stumbling across energy healing and diving into that. And then literally, it was it, I'm, I'm being called to a story where I was lying on the beach one day, and I, I remember I was getting bombarded with all these like, Um, all this information on Reiki healing and energy healing and whatnot. And I remember I was lying on the beach and I I remember saying, is is this my, and this was when I was becoming very intuitive and and really tuning into my intuition for answers. Um, Which by the way, is something I believe we all have. Um, And I remember just laying there going, is this really the path for me? Like, is this, is this the direction? I'm still in my corporate job at the time. So this is way far left from where I am in, in the present reality. And I opened my eyes and there is this woman standing over me who I had seen before. We lived in the same building, but we'd never really had a conversation. And um, there she is all of a sudden standing over me with her dog. And she comes and sits next to me on my blanket on the beach. And sure enough, she's a Reiki master. Now, she wasn't teaching at the time. However, she answered a lot of my questions and was able to direct me to who would become my my teacher and my master on this journey so she was the two that that she was the one who kind of connected the two of us that's amazing and it was literally in that moment when I was asking for confirmation if I was on the right path so when I say it was revealed to me it was literally revealed to me (laughs) ask and you shall receive (laughs) exactly exactly and that's and that's how all of this works and I do believe that we all have that power to tap into healing and intuition and all these beautiful things the methods and the modalities I think will be different for each and every one of us and how we use it I think is different 
Um, but I think once you set that intention and once you're really open to exploring what that looks like for you and how you can utilize it, whether it's for yourself or for other people, I think you open that conversation with the universe so that this information can sort of come to you. Yeah. Amazing illustration yeah. of how you unlock the magic by just asking a powerful question. Just ask, ask you how receive. Yeah. I'm having the courage to ask because a lot of the time we don't ask because we don't, when we don't want to change. And we don't well, there's times the you don't want to know the answer. I've actually went yeah. through that very recently where it's like, you almost don't want to know the answer. You're afraid of it. It scares you. Um, and there's resistance. So when we, when we're in that space, we tend to block the answer from coming. So the important thing to remember in situations like that, and what I've been trying to remind myself is that you are always being guided. You are always being led. And every time I've ever had to go through any difficult um, transformational change, and many of them are, they're often not very easy at all when you're in it, but on the other side of it, you're always so grateful for it because you can't imagine going back to the life you had before, whatever the situation was, right? So totally. Yeah, it's always worth it in the end. Yes, <laughs> doesn't always feel like it when you're in it, but <laughs> it is always yeah. worth it in the end. The universe always knows best. <laughs> so, um, what is what is like the biggest message on your heart at the moment that you wish you know everybody in your community knew that you knew would be really you know really life changing if people really understood? Yeah, I'm goosebumps right now. So. What I'm actually being guided and feeling very strongly, like it's it, like I want to say, is that each and every one of us has access to an infinite potential in the spiritual realms. When we're talking about our, you know, we have our spiritual body, our mental body, our emotional body, and our physical body. And a lot of times, because we're brought up in a very physical world, we attach our identity to the physical being that we are. So we think that our power sort of stops and ends with where our bodies begins and ends, right? Your infinite self is so much larger and more powerful than that. And what your infinite self is actually capable of, like what you're capable of in this lifetime, so far exceeds anything that you can comprehend mentally because mentally is based on the physical it's based on the finite it's based on what you've already proven you can experience what you've seen other people prove to you that they've experienced therefore it's available to you if you're not in stuck in comparison of course that's a whole other conversation for another day but um if you can't see it you don't believe it so my challenge for anyone listening to this you know, maybe you're on the precipice of making some big changes in your life. Maybe, um, you know, you're tapping into your intuitive gifts, but you're not really sure what to do with it. Or maybe you're just feeling like something's not right. You're not sure what it is. You know, you're meant to be you're somewhere else or doing somewhere else, but you can't quite put your finger on it. I want you to imagine that in your wildest dreams, what, whatever you think would be the farthest stretch of what your pot, what you can be ever be capable of in this lifetime, what would be that biggest stretch goal that you can think of that you would think no way, no how your infinite potential is so far beyond that and beyond anything that you can comprehend. But you, and the key is really in being in that knowing that you are so much more powerful than you actually realize. And when you start to being open to tapping into some of this power, being tapping into some of your gifts, your intuition, that higher wisdom, that higher knowing, when you start to make yourself available to that and just trust that it is there for you, all the information will slowly reveal itself to you on the journey. And I truly believe that. Boom. Awesome <laughs> I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I would love to talk to you a little bit about um, the power of and the importance of releasing childhood trauma as a part oh. of that process of stepping into your, you know, your next level of expansion, because I know Absolutely. that's your, your area of expertise. And, and I know, you, you know, you've spoken to me about, you know, you've worked with many different clients and it can be anything from like, 
you know, somebody flicking gum at you at school to, you know, obviously like more serious abuse, but it, yeah. the, all of these little instances, the way that they make a mark on our psyche and they create a belief and they create an emotional pattern. And actually these are the things that are keeping us stuck from stepping into fully creating our, our desires. These are the things that create that resistance. Um, yes. What do you, what do you wish people really knew about that process of healing childhood trauma? And, and why it's so beneficial and important. There's two things that come up when we talk about, for me, that when I talk about trauma is reframing the trauma that happened when we were younger and learning how to deal with trauma as we progress through life. Because trauma is something that we will experience. I mean, it's, 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 it's part of our journey in healing and growing. Um, there's always going to be traumatic events. We're always going to experience some sort of emotional turmoil and it's in how we process that turmoil that, um, enables us to more quickly tap into that infinite potential that we were talking about. Oftentimes, um, and it's really the traumas when, that we experience between the age of, of, you know, when we're born to seven that really just mold our mindset, Right. Um, and what'll happen is I, when I see trauma, it, it's, it's almost like a, um, a hamster wheel, right? So if the trauma is a hamster wheel, we're constantly running around on this hamster wheel, trying to break free. Yet we keep regurgitating and recreating events that will make us feel the way we felt when the trauma was first inflicted, Right. So let's say something happens, you know, at the age of two, two or three years old, right? You experience a level of trauma. It makes you feel, and it usually brings us to a feeling of unworthiness or being less than. So you, you experience something that makes you feel unworthy or some way you realize you're not lovable. You're not good enough. You're afraid of being abandoned and rejected. So that creates a belief. The child then imprints that in their mind and says, I never want to experience this again and almost vows mentally to avoid, to do anything in its power to avoid ever feeling that way again. That becomes a limiting belief. And then as that limiting belief starts to control your life, as you get older, if you don't address it, it, that's what keeps you on this hamster wheel of trying to avoid the trauma. But what ends up happening is you end up attracting more situations that will make you feel the exact same belief over and over again because your infinite self actually wants you to um, transcend the trauma, take the lesson from it, and evolve as a spiritual being. So that the cycle of trauma in a spiritual sense is actually integral to our evolution, but it's all in how we look at it. So when we can look at that trauma and decipher why did this happen? What was this trying to teach me? And how can I apply this to my life now to create the transformation that I'm looking for? Then the trauma has served its purpose and the cycle stops repeating. But oftentimes we get stuck in the cycle. We get stuck in the story. We get stuck in the pain. We were not comfortable being in our feeling body, which is so crucial to healing through the trauma is being in the emotional body of what was created so that that can all be released. Um, that's what keeps us stuck on the hamster wheel. And it becomes a life that feels, and I can speak from experience, um, very restrictive, very suffocating. And just this feel, this awful feeling like there's got to be more to life than, than what I'm experiencing in this hamster wheel that I'm kind of stuck on. You won't know it's a hamster wheel, but it feels that way because it feels like you're constantly running, 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 and you're getting nowhere super fast is the best way I can describe it. That's such a beautiful explanation. And yeah, I feel like in our culture, we're, we're like toddlers when it comes to emotional intelligence. Oh, we have zero <laughs> emotional intelligence. <laughs> and if, you know, if you think about the way that we talk about, um, you know, it's part of of our cultural discussion of taking care of our bodies, you know, yeah. exercising, eating good food, going to the gym, getting outside in nature, like moving, sweating, breathing. But 
who's talking about our emotional upkeep and our emotional well-being and like cleaning and tending to you and nurturing and nourishing I mean we're obviously starting to talk about it now yeah it's still very much this like mysterious kind of like ignored aspect of our health and you know the way that I discovered this is through going through my own um you know emotional and physical health struggles and doing everything within my power I learned all about nutrition supplementation yoga meditation I was doing all of these things and I just it got me up to a certain point and I was like there's so much more like I'm you know I, I felt like I'd made about this much progress as soon as I started doing the emotional healing work and really starting to understand that part of myself and you know apply tools and you know ask for help and just yeah. you know practice and gain understanding with what was going on with my <clears throat> emotional and spiritual health like suddenly whew, like things shift really shifted very dramatically for me and, and you said something really powerful right there. And, and I think that's really key in, in helping us to evolve past this phase that, that this, this emotional toddler essence that we seem to be stuck in is that it is emotional and it, the approach also needs to be emotional and spiritual, right? Both elements need to be addressed in order for them to, for there to be real transformation. I think we've gotten a little bit better at talking about feelings and emotional health and well-being, right. And talking about the importance of, you know, seeking support and getting therapy, you know, we're a little bit more, um, slightly more open (laughs) about those things, but yet we still don't share our personal stories about going to therapists or going to psychiatrists or anything, you know, anything like that. Right. And I also think that when we talk about therapy and psychology as the way in which our society encourages us to deal with our emotion, that's a very masculine approach to what is a very feminine process, right? It's very needed, right? I've, I've been, I was in therapy for years and, 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 you know, seeing therapists and psychologists and whatnot. Um, and it was very supportive, very, very supportive, but it's not the be all end all, right? And I think that we need those solutions that embody both the masculine and the feminine approach to dealing with these things. And while we've gotten good at seeking out the therapist and the psychologist, we also have to tune into our emotional and our spiritual body to, to do a lot of this work for us. Because again, what we fail to recognize is all this emotional pain and trauma is serving a spiritual purpose so if we're, all, if we're only dealing with it in the physical and the masculine and by going to therapists and psychologists, we're doing some of the work, but the real transformation happens when you apply the spiritual principles. And that's when you see rapid change. Yeah, that was really true for me. I remember when I, you know, I was ha- having these physical health symptoms and I went to see an osteopath and she was like, you need to go and see a therapist. <laughs> like, yeah. depressed. And, okay. a, and a lot of times these things will manifest physically, right? Yeah. You know, right. I know, I, you know, we've been there. I feel like that's like, it's got, it's got bad if you've got a physical symptom around it. Right. And I, you know, and I had so much self judgment and shame. I was like, Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm depressed. And like, I've screwed up. I've done something wrong. I'm not good. Like I'm not normal, like everybody else. And which, you know, just is a ridiculous myth. Um, (laughs) Nobody gets depressed as a human being ever. That we all buy into. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I I had, I really had that attitude for a long time, even though my therapist was incredible. My hypnotherapist um, never made me feel like that at all, but that was just a story in my head that I had to fix my, fix myself. I was broken. And then, you know, eventually it was really meditation that, that was the gateway for me to just start to, um, just tap into more of a sensitivity of like what was going on and be able to listen to my, to my insights and really connect with my body and connect with my emotions and just, you know, actually be able to sense what was going on, which I think I was yeah. just completely numb to for, you know, the majority of my life. I'd never developed that language around being able to understand that part of my, my experience. And then, yeah, that just opened the doorway to so many magical things and just made it so much easier. You're like, oh, uh, it's just easier when you come at things from like, you know, understanding yourself at this level rather than, you know, trying to work with this very limited toolkit that doesn't really um, take you very far at all. Absolutely. And I just think like when I, when I think of what you just said, and, and I think back to my journey and when I, when I, and I think about a lot of the women that I've connected with over the years, it really does start with simple things. Meditation, 
right? Getting rid of all the noise and all the clutter in your mind so that you're an open vessel to receive guidance, to tap into your intuition, to listen to what your soul is trying to tell you and what it, it's always known everything it needs to know. You just need to quiet your mind long enough to be able to hear it, right? So simple practices like meditation, gratitude, um, and just practicing being and, and, and using your intuition. If you can do those three things, everything, your journey will reveal itself to you. What needs to be healed will reveal itself to you. The healers you're meant to work with will literally like roll onto your, onto the sidewalk in front of you and you will trip over them. Right. And they will have the services for you. Even I, I, I know that even in the beginning of my journey, I know that like when I think that, um, and I know so many women that struggle with this, right. Where it's like, well, you know, I want to do the healing work, but I can't afford to work with someone privately one-on-one. Something will open up either. They're going to launch a, a, a program where you can work with them in a group setting, or you'll win a free VIP day to, to like things happen. As long as you set the intention that you're ready, willing, and able to tap into that infinite potential. Whatever that is, even if you don't know what it looks like, doesn't matter, right? Don't get caught up in what it looks like and what it actually means. Just set the intention that you're that you're there, you're willing, and you're able. Quiet your mind long enough to actually be able to put you in that energy of receiving and be in gratitude no matter where you find yourself. And those three those three things will catalyze you in ways like that are astronomical. Yeah, it's really true. And that was really the case for me. Um, You know, once I I was just very set on, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to feel better, I'm going to be able to experience the things that I want to experience in life. And um, yeah, it's always, always shown up, always the support has been there. And yeah, it's like when you're a yes to your soul, when you're a yes to um, what feels, what's really calling you and just is really resonating with you. Yeah you're it always happens. supported you always find a way like you say um <clears throat> and it that's always been the case for me too like the person who I who I am ready to work with that has the exact thing yeah. that I need just like boom shows up like in my inbox like you say or like you know they're just like next to you and, and that's been the same for me too with a lot of my clients yeah I've, like bumped into people on the street and they're like having a meltdown about something and I'm like oh that's exactly what I help people with like we well, it's funny if even if you look at the dynamics of our relations, like we become such close friends, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that I think that we both do we do such similar work, and we're both so powerful, but we do it in slightly different ways. And I feel like you fill in where I have gaps, and I fill in where you have gaps, and together it's like we become like our own, we become our own masculine and feminine partnership. Where we're like. We're like literally filling in gaps for one another and helping each other see our blind spots. And I, and, and it's a relationship like that because that becomes really magical. And those, those magical arrangements happen when you set that intention mm-hmm. or you, you know what, a lot of times there's been many cases where I've won, I've been so dead set on working with someone. I literally manifested the money to work with them overnight because yeah. it was aligned. Yeah. Right. And, and it was a done deal signed on the dotted line. And yeah. we started the next day, right? And and that's also a pattern that I've noticed for myself too. When I invest in myself and I say yes to myself and I do the work that's going to lead to more expansion, like that has expanded my wealth every single time. It's every like time when you open yourself up, then you're able to receive more. It's like, yeah, you. it's just, yeah, it's like the visual um, way of thinking about it is like, you know, and people ask this question all the time. And I ask this to my clients all the time, like, does it make you feel expansive or contracted? Like when you yeah. think about doing something, if it's an expansive feeling and you're like, ah, yes, then you're, you're opening up to that next level to be able to receive all of the good things at that next yes. level. Um, and it might still feel scary and expansive and that's okay. And that's okay. And I, 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 I cause I, 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 some, I recently got into the, the pattern of if it felt scary, it didn't feel right. Mm. But that's actually a lie. If it feels expansive and a little bit scary, it's still good. If it feels like you're stifling yourself or you're like, you're closed in, that's when you know it's a no. Yeah. And one way I think about fear is that if I wasn't really afraid, then it would mean I didn't really care. Yeah. So it's always a good sign. You weren't growing because always yeah. growth is always going to scare you just a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Or a lot, actually, sometimes. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> 
Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of this incredible wisdom with us today. Um, please, can you tell us, for anyone who's listening, who's interested in learning more about your work and what you do, where, what, what's the next steps for them? Absolutely. Well, we've talked, I mean, we talked a lot about the trauma stuff, uh, work that I do. Um, so if you want to take it to the next step and you're ready to start, um, again, tapping into that infinite potential, um, I do have a, a daily five minute practice. It's literally five steps, five minutes. I call it the radical shift daily practice. It's literally what started me on my journey and some of these little key elements um, that got me on the path to really tapping into that infinite potential so I could start creating my life on my terms. Um, it's super easy. Uh, you can find that on my website. There's also a training that goes with it that helps you learn how to use it. So if you just go to thefemcoach.com, um, you'll see it there just below the header and you can access it there. Or you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook as well. Thefemcoach.com. Awesome. We'll share that link yes. in all of the comments and everything as well. Thank yes. you so much. And um, Thank you. You're yeah. so amazing. I'm so blessed to, to have you and, and to have worked with you. And, and you're just so powerful and such a light. And I'm just honored to have you. Oh, in, uh, in you. my circle. Thank you. You're amazing too. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Yay. Thank Thanks for watching everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.